firstborn child. The Illuminati in its typical schizophrenic way, has not neglected the opportunities to begin the programming process in the womb. The scientific research in this area has been kept quiet, but from an ex-Illuminati programmer it is clear that they are aware of much more about the unborn child in the womb and its thinking processes than the public knows about. I was privileged to read the excellent book The Secret Life of the Unborn Child by Thomas Vayner, M.D. with John Kelly. This book is written from a loving Christian viewpoint and incorporates scientific research about the thinking of unborn children. Interestingly, Vena studied research into the mind of the fetus from researchers at the Max Planck Institute, Munich, Germany, from the Esalen Institute, Big Sur, CA, from the Center for Research on Birth and Human Development, Berkeley, CA which are all institutions involved in mind control and mind control research. Just one example of the learning abilities of the unborn child, an autistic child remembered the English her French-speaking mother was around during work while the child was in the womb. Vaney writes, the fetus can see, hear, experience, taste and, on a primitive level, even learn in utero, that is, in the uterus before birth. Most importantly, he can feel not with an adult sophistication, but feel nonetheless. P12 research has clearly showed that the fetus can think and is shaping its, his or her, personality while in the womb. Maternal thoughts, feelings, actions, and fears all reach the child in the womb and affect the child. The maternal bonding with the child while in the womb is also critical. Researchers have been unable to pinpoint when a baby in the womb begins to think, and have a consciousness, but some theorize that it goes back clear to the beginning of conception. One study taught fetus babies to kick on the cue of a vibration. The researchers have determined that the unborn child hears what is being said around it, and is beginning to associate its language skills around the voices it hears. The unborn child hears and reacts differently to different music played. Soothing words and soothing music will calm a fetus. One conductor remembered into his adult years, the cello music that had only been played while he was an unborn child. According to excellent research, the start of awareness is clearly evidenced between the 28th and 32nd week. At that point, the brain's neural circuits are just as advanced as a newborn's. This is why the Illuminati can get away with causing so many preemie births to enhance dissociative abilities. From the 32nd week on the child shows that it carries out REM sleep. It is also interesting the children, Teenagers and adults have widely divergent sleep patterns but the time spent in REM sleep stays constant. Researchers have been able to trace memories going back to the sixth month of pregnancy. In other words, from the sixth month of pregnancy onward, some of what the unborn child learns will be remembered. See page 23 of Varney's The Secret Life of the Unborn Child. This is why the Illuminati has made a point of having the unborn child hear the voices of people who will play a role in the trauma and programming of the child. The child may already know the hypnotic voice of one of its cult programmers at birth. Researchers found that by playing a tape of a mother's heartbeat to newborn babies that the babies felt dramatically more secure, and were much healthier and did much better. A child who has been trained to its father's soothing voice in the womb, has been proven to remember it and hear it after birth and to respond to it in a positive way. In fact, the emotionally healthiest children have been found by researchers to have had their father's voice in their life prior to birth. Unborn children do not like to be poked at. In the eighth week of life, the unborn child is already using his physical abilities to show that he dislikes intensely to be poked. One of the early fetus traumas, that the Illuminati like to carry out is to poke the fetus with a sharp object to make it dissociative in the womb. By the fourth month, the unborn baby is making facial expressions. Four to eight weeks later they are sensitive to touch, and don't like to be tickled while in the womb. Sometimes children are tickled during medical exams. If cold water is injected into the mother's stomach, the baby intensely dislikes it. The child can be overwhelmed while in the womb with horrible sounds, bad tastes caused by what the mother eats, being touched in ways that it dislikes, etc. Rock music drives unborn children crazy. 
Programming drugs that cause particular thinking in the fetus can also be administered. Can one see that the traumatization to cause MPD can easily start in the womb? In fact, with many Illuminati babies, they do create womb splits, and have even started trying to teach Christ to the child while in the womb, to speed up the process of when they will purposefully make the child feel rejected by God and to experience the black communion with Satan. The foundation of trauma-based total mind control is fear. A deep spirit of fear cripples a person spiritually and emotionally. The foundation of fear can begin to be layered in while the child is still unborn. The unborn child has near-sighted seeing. He can detect light shined on his mother's stomach. In fact, the fetus's eyes, which are living in a dark world, will hurt when light is shined onto the mom's stomach. A long-term unresolved personal stress on the mother will be one of the worst stresses her unborn child has to deal with. Short-term stresses don't seem to have the long-term side effects that long-term stress has. Short-term stresses are soon forgotten by the child. Somehow, the love that the mother has for the child is transmitted to the child, and forms a protective shield so to speak for the child to resist traumas and stresses. When the mother is ambivalent, even though outwardly happy, or cool in their emotions, the babies have been proven by researchers to consistently have more physical and emotional problems. If the Illuminati want to create an effeminate gay man, they can administer progesterone and estrogen to the mother during her pregnancy, and this will influence the development of male children to be effeminate. Certain researchers have been warning about the hormones that are in our daily food because modern techniques of raising cattle and producing milk include giving hormones to the animals. It is also known that the child's concept of I the self starts in the womb. Those children who have had a secure womb feeling have been shown to be more confident with their sexual lives later on in life. While those who were terrified in the womb had a tendency to have sexual problems. The traumas that are induced into some of the babies for programming purposes may have a destabilizing effect on the sexual stability later on in life, and it may be that the programmers take advantage of the unsure destabilized feelings that are a consequence of terror in the womb. Children born from induced labor have a statistically high relationship to sexual sadism, and males typically have masochistic personalities. See page 19 of The Secret Life of the Unborn Child. Since certain Illuminati children have their births induced to match certain dates of the year, this is one contributing factor as to why Illuminati males, born into bloodlines that have for centuries considered certain birthdates important, have such a high incidence of sadistic tendencies. Verney believes that C-section babies, due to what happens to babies during the birthing process in contrast to a normal birth, have certain emotional needs that later as adults are expressed as promiscuous lives. Women due to their C-section birth, develop a deep-seated desire to be held, and intercourse later becomes the price they have to pay to satisfy this deep-seated need. Common Illuminati Work with Twins The Illuminati mask the removal of babies from pregnant mothers with alien abduction of fetus cover stories. When twins are in the uterus, it is common for the Illuminati to skillfully take one of them. This is part of why the disappearance rate for a twin baby is 75%. It is so prevalent that it has been given the name the vanishing twin phenomenon. The vanishing twin phenomenon is well established by statistics. Establishment doctors generally claim that one twin has absorbed the other twin. Some researchers claim that this cannot be the real explanation for any part of the birthing process. Elizabeth Noble in her book Having Twins, Houghton Mifflin, 1990, states, with increasing use of ultrasound, it has been observed that more multiples are lost in the uterus than previously thought some studies say as high as 80% of twin pregnancies. Considering that there are still 2 in 75 people born as twins, what a great number of twins would be born if the disappearance rate were not so high. There are many cases of two heartbeats being detected only hours before the delivery, and yet only one baby being born. Many mothers have been suspicious, but the doctors tell them that the second heartbeat was only a mistake. The explanations that doctors give for disappearing babies who are never born often do not seem satisfactory. There are different kinds of twins. A. There are dizygotic, also called fraternal twins. 
Two variations of this is when eggs from two consecutive ovarian cycles are separately fertilized, or a single egg divides and each of its halves gets fertilized. B. There are monozygotic, which are identical, or clones so to speak of each other. Identical twins are always of the same sex. They share the same genes, the same fingerprints, dental characteristics, etc. C. There are monozygotic mirror twins, which have identical characteristics on opposite sides of their body. When one twin disappears, the surviving twin will often develop psychological problems around a disappearance, even if the child is never told that they had a twin disappear. The Illuminati believe that the soul of a dead twin goes into the live twin. They consider twins which have two souls very powerful individuals. One doctor, William Baldwin, has written in his book Spirit Releasement Therapy, a technique manual that he believes that the dead twin astrally attaches its soul to the surviving twin. Dr. Alice Rose believes that some eating disorders are the result of a twin dying in the womb due to competition for food. To further complicate things, the Illuminati program their slaves to believe that they have a twin somewhere. Elvis Presley, a monarch mind-controlled slave, believed he had a twin that communicated with him spiritually. In the Angel Times magazine, October issue, a childhood friend of Elvis states that Elvis communicated with beings as a child. These being had showed Elvis a vision of dancing, and of people dressed in white with colors all around. While it is popular to dismiss the vanishing twin phenomena with superficial medical explanations, or with alien theories, at least of some of the phenomena is the result of the Illuminati's massive system of abuse, where they need babies for sacrifice, experiments and programming. Selection of Adult Candidates for Mind Control there is an ongoing operation within the intelligence agencies to identify adults who would make good candidates for mind control. For this reason, the CIA set up many years ago chains of weight loss centers, as well as stop smoking centers and stop drinking centers, that help people with weight loss, and breaking drinking and smoking addictions. At these centers, People trained to identify clients with high levels of suggestibility have been identifying for the intelligence agencies, especially the CIA, potential mind control victims. Intelligence assets are located around the country and even outside of the United States. The perpetrators try to look for individuals that come through immigration, who come into county clinics and hospitals, government hospitals, etc. who have the following initial attributes. A. They are over 120 IQ. B. They are alone without a support team of family and friends. C. They do well on their first session where hypnosis is clandestinely perpetrated on the individual. D. They have other attributes that can be exploited to the advantage of the intelligence groups. If a person is identified at a weight reduction center, which is a CIA front, as having a weight problem that needs to receive hospital treatment and they are also highly suggestible, they will be subjected to mind control while hospitalized. According to one source, if the individual, who has been A spotted, B singled out and C placed under hypnosis without their consent, D looks like a useful candidate for mind control to the psychologists and intelligence field officers, then a file will be started and they will be placed in a call file. The initial hypnotic session may be in a dirty doctor's office, or in some cases in emergency rooms. Dirty doctors working in emergency room settings are careful to work undetected by clean hospital workers. The hypnotic suggestion is implanted that the victim return at a particular date to a location where more detailed work can be done. U.S. Government Mind Control Level 1 A proper candidate, that is one with an IQ above 120 and proper hypnotic abilities, will be given a code Q, that is an alphanumeric code, or a number or a word code that identifies them. This is embedded hypnotically. If the person has no relatives that are important, they will be instructed and secretly helped to move to a location chosen by the intelligence agencies. The programmers will cover their tracks so that what has happened at this level is deeply embedded in the subconscious mind and can't be retrieved. U.S. Government Mind Control Level 2 at this level the person is used operationally at very easy and unimportant tasks. He is also assigned someone. 
the hypnotist programmer is beginning to soften the victim up and make them more pliable to suggestions. If he successfully performs these small jobs that have been hypnotically written into the mind, then he will be given a recall service notice by the person who is in contact with the victim. Now the person moves on to level 3, which is a fully operational level. U.S. Government Mind Control Level 3 When the victim is instructed to come in, they do not realize what is in store for them. Now their own personality will be rewritten according to what script the programmers want it to have. The person will be set to carry out his instructions as needed. The slave will now be given specific trigger codes to carry out assignments. All field agents of the intelligence agencies get level 3 control. Government Mind Control Level 4 This level is reserved for candidates who are very intelligent and very loyal to hypnotic commands. Victims of this level of mind control will follow out any command they are given, whether it be suicidal or harmful. Because these victims of mind control are now under total mind control, just as many members of the Illuminati grow up under, the intelligence agencies want to protect their level 4 slaves. They will be given a new life along with a total new identity. All the credentials and paperwork that the new identity needs will be created. The slave has now received a totally new life, and whatever script, agenda, the intelligence agencies want. The programming that was placed in up to level 3 is erased in a sense and an entire new life script is placed in. This is done with the use of drugs, deception, and other sophisticated mind control techniques described in volume 2 and this book. Complete areas of memory are erased at this stage and then a new history is written into the pre-puberty area of memory. This takes some time, and is accomplished using a number of techniques our books have described. The old memory is erased and OVERWRITEN with the new history and script. The brain assimilates this new knowledge as if it's always been there, because it feels comfortable putting something into a void spot. The programmers prefer to find a period in the original person's life when nothing happened. It is easy to erase a memory block when nothing significant is in original memory, i.e. it is basically blank anyway. As a sleeper the level 5 slave may marry and lead a relatively normal life. One clue that the person is going to be used on a mission is if he suddenly leaves his wife and goes somewhere. This may be a clue that the handlers are positioning the person for a mission. They may also have nullified the slave's external life, so there isn't the purpose of life to prevent a suicide mission. U.S. Government Mind Control Level 5 this level is reserved for people with an IQ of at least 130. This level will require taking the slave to a special programming center, where they are taken down to the comatose level of subconscious awareness to place the programming in at the deepest levels of the mind. The victim may be comatose for days or months, and this requires a catheter in the neck, urinary and digestive tracts to keep the body properly functioning. Because the person will be hospitalized for quite a while, a popular cover story is that they had an automobile accident. Remember, in Volume 2, it was discussed how Roseanne Barr, now an actress with MPD slash did, had as a teenager an automobile accident during which she received significant programming. Many of these level 5 slaves are placed as sleepers into organizations of all kinds, where they lead normal lives. The level 5 triggers activate programs deeply embedded and nested into the memory of a person. A team of programmers work on level 5 slaves. They must make sure that the victim has a support system so that they do not self-destruct. They may have psychologists in normal life set up to serve as a support person for the slave. It was interesting to see that after learning from people in the know about how memory is erased and a new identity given, that the show Nowhere Man portrayed this happening to a black man. Whoever wrote the scripts for Nowhere Man had an excellent understanding of what is going on in mind control. Testing Young Children to Plan the Programming In Volume 2, Chapter it was explained how the programmers can test the preverbal child to determine and plan how they will program them. E.G.'s and Gittinger's tests were discussed. Here is more information. Researchers have been able to study the personalities of unborn children and to watch how these personality traits stay with the children through their lives. 
In the Volume 2 book it was explained how the Illuminati has used EEGs to determine the personalities of preverbal children so that they know what type of programming is best suited for that personality. Interestingly, on Monday, April 12, 96, 11 p.m. after the Volume 2 book was out on the market, 2020ths did a show where they showed researchers using EEG electrodes to monitor children's brainwaves for their happiness potential. It is known that brain potentials associated with voluntary movements have been identified, thereby giving Big Brother the potential to predict when a person is going to make a particular movement. The brain is dynamically looking at patterns and continuously generating hypnotheses about its environment which are then validated or invalidated by information picked up by the senses. The P300 wave, known as the P3 wave for short, allows neuroscientists to track decision-making in a brain's cortex. The P300 wave shows when the mind's thought processes have been internally surprised. In this way, detection of the P300 gives a method of lie detection superior to the polygraph. When surprised the brain creates P300 wave by internal brain functions such as what chapped. 4 will call cognitive demon processes. Initially, EEGs are taken of child victims, with an analysis of the different waveforms. Next, will come tests of bare, visually evoked responses. This is valuable for instance, because bright children will show asymmetric, high amplitude, responses during bare from the right hemisphere. Children with low IQ show the same evoked response from both hemispheres. This is just one window on the mind that the Illuminati programmers have of the preverbal children. There are other evoked potential tests that are being used to determine personality traits too. Evoked responses can also be used to show whether the person is conscious, or how deep they are in a coma. The early components of the evoked response, which occur 10 to 20 milliseconds after a stimulus, are believed to come from the brain stem and can be used to determine a level of a coma. Evoked responses are also used to determine particular learning disabilities within a child. Right-handed children will show even prior to birth, an anatomical specialization that favors language acquisition in the left hemisphere. So they can even determine what handedness the child has very early on.